Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on course computational finance. Today we have question number two that is based on materials discussed in lecture number one. So for all the details, I recommend to revisit lecture number one. The question of today is, how is the money savings account related to a zero coupon bond? Uh, this question uh, highlights the importance and the relation between uh, interest rates especially if we move from the deterministic case, let's say, considered in the Black-Scholes world, and we move to the case where interest rates are stochastic. Then the, the difference between money savings account and a zero coupon bond, it's very, very important. And this will be also illustrated in my answer. So let's start with a definition of a, a money savings account. And after that, I will explain what is a zero coupon bond. And then it will become very clear what is the difference between the two, and in which case, you can actually, uh, in actually in a deterministic case, how this relation is very much straightforward. However, if we consider stochastic interest rates, this relation is much more involved and also much more interesting to, to see. So let's start with a definition of the uh, time value of money. So if we have one euro today, um, and then we are interested in the value of this one euro in the future, then if we consider the simple, com uh, simple interest rate, so the uh, the one that we the amount that we will receive in a year it will be simply one euro times one plus interest rate so this quantity here it's in the percent right so then this is the number higher that we will see today there are multiple ways of uh, looking at uh, interest rates so the uh, how these rates can be computed so the simple one is the one that we just calculate interest rate on a uh, our principal, and this is the amount we will receive in the future. We could also have compounded interest rate, where every day we receive some interest rate, and that interest rate, the payment, will be compounded to the next day. Then we talk about a compounded interest rate. So um, in lecture number one, I gave you a detailed description uh, explaining the, how the money savings account uh, can be derived. Uh, the bottom line is this relation here. So the money savings account at time t is equal to the initial value. Of course, here we can just consider one. And then we have uh, times e to power rt. So this is the, uh, the money savings account that you can actually see uh, derivations in lecture number one. Of course, if we consider uh, stochastic interest rates, then this quantity will be simply m from t is equal to m m t zero and then we would have an exponent and then we have integral from t zero to uh, t r s d s so this is the uh, money savings account uh, if in the case where we have a stochastic interest rate so this is s here this is r s so then we have to integrate the same case would be if you would consider not constant interest rate or stochastic, but time dependent, then we this is the quantity that we will be dealing with. And this comes uh, at the, so, mm, this comes from the fact that money savings account is defined in this way. So it's a DMT is equal to RMT, and then we have uh, if we move this dt here, move from here to here, this will be the t. So this is the generic definition of a money savings account. So if R becomes a stochastic or time dependent, this uh, definition of money savings account always holds. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, constant interest rates and uh, let's say inverse problem, so instead of saying how much money we will receive in the future, we could ask what is the value of certain amount in the future discounted to today, then we have to do uh, essentially 1 over mt, right? And then actually in this case would be uh, because then we have to do it like this way. So if you would like to have a uh, we have time t today, and in the future we have capital time t, we would like to discount this amount. The discount factor is defined in this way, which is equal to m t divided by m capital time t. And if you have a small t equal to zero, so today, then this will be gone, and then this will be equal to one, and then this will be the definition of discount factor. And actually, we can actually see that if you look at m t, then this will correspond to this quantity here. So you see, in the case of um, uh, interest rates, which are deterministic, it's a very trivial relation. However, it's much more in, in involved once this interest rate become 
stochastic. Of course, here it is still straightforward because we still integrate a stochastic quantity. Uh, but how to confront it with zero coupon bond? That's the part of the uh, next slide. So zero coupon bond, it's a contract that pays one euro at the future time capital time t. So this is a contract with P defined has two arguments, uh, small t and capital time t, so like defined here, which at the maturity of this contract, we will receive one euro. And the pricing problem is what is the value of this contract today? So if we, what is the value that we can see at time P t zero capital time t? That's typically the standard pricing problem. We have a payoff. We are interested in value today. Whole computational finance, you, in essence, you can say, um, we always focus on values today. What is the value of a contract that will pay us something in the future? Because this will determine the fair value of this contract. So if you look at the generic case where we have a stochastic interest rates, uh, then we have a, uh, the fundamental pricing theorem says, if we have the pricing of a, of a contract, the contract of a H capital time T, so there'll be one payment at the capital time T, discounted today under risk neutral measure is the value that we have today. And this is based on the filtration uh, F small t. Then if we replace this capital time, uh, um, if we replace this H T with a payoff, because this is the value that you receive at the maturity, and then we end up with this quantity here. So you see zero coupon bond, uh, it is an expectation of the integ integrated interest rates. If we compare it to the money savings account, you can see here, money savings account was uh, uh, initial value. So this is irrelevant, we can say it's just one. Then we have exponent of integral of interest rates. However, if we look at the zero coupon bond, it is almost the same, except for this minus sign, but this is about expectation. So this is a huge difference between money savings account and uh, zero coupon bond. Zero coupon bond tells us the expected value of the future payment. However, the money savings account is kind of integrated value. So we know the value today, at the future date, it is a compounded interest rate over a whole period of time. So if we look at the summary, this is actually how we can summarize this. M at capital time T is equal to initial value of the money savings account then we have exponent of integral and a zero coupon bond. If you just follow the definition, then it is an expectation of minus integral. And this is exponent of minus integral of interest rates. And this is the relation between money savings account and zero coupon bond. In this course, a computational finance course, we mainly are focused on the case where interest rates are deterministic. However, this uh, relation it is a key, one of the most important relations that we will be using in a course of financial engineering uh, that is also available on this channel. So please revisit if uh, uh, those, those materials if you are interested uh, in this topic, uh, especially this type of relations. Those are very important once we are talking about a change of year, Then we really need to know uh, what is the dynamics, what is the relation between zero coupon bonds and money savings account. The change of measure, uh, as explained in this course, it is extremely powerful machinery that allows us to often simplify very complicated payoffs uh, into the simplified form and often allows us even to find the pricing equations analytically. So I hope I have explained. Uh, you can see that the main the difference between the two is an expectation that plays important role. If we wouldn't have a stochastic interest rates, you could easily see that zero coupon bond. So if we have a deterministic interest rate or even let's say constant, then P T T would be simply one over, or actually here would be M T M capital M T. This would be the relation if we would have, a, let me write it nicely. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for my handwriting, M small T M capital M T. This is the relation for constant interest rate. In the terms of stochastic, we have this expectation and that's the key difference between the two. I hope I have explained well. See you next time. Bye bye.